And greetings, my friends, patriots, lovers of democracy, truth, and justice, believers in peace, freedom, and the American way. Not so much the American way today in, uh, in Indiana. This is, this is tragic, frankly. I mean, if for, for the roughly 800 people who are going to have their jobs saved for a few months or a few years... I'm, I'm very pleased for, for them and for their families. But they are being used as props by a con man who will soon be occupying the office of President of the United States and a con man who will soon be occupying the office of Vice President of the United States. And it looks like the con man who's going to be the Vice President has shoved enough money at United Technologies, the multi-billion dollar defense contractor that owns Carrier, that, you know, they're going to save 800 jobs. They're, the media is rounding it up to 1,000. They're going to save 800 to 1,000 jobs, let's say, in Indiana. And Indiana, in exchange, is going to give Carrier, what, $100,000 a job, $200,000 a job? I mean, typically, these kind of deals where states, in order to keep a, a, an employer in the state, they, they lavishly give tax breaks or tax credits or, you know, other, quote, incentives to the company. In this case, it might even be a juicy defense contract that's worth billions. Um, typically, you know, to save a $50,000 job, they give the company, you know, two dollars $300,000 so the executives can skim some off the top. And so there's plenty that can be skimmed off the top and recycled back into campaign contributions for Mike Pence. And it looks like Mike Pence is using the state government of Indiana. He is, after all, the governor of Indiana. Looks like Mike Pence is using the state of Indiana to channel this thing. This is not what Donald Trump campaigned on. The corporate media is not telling you this. I, I am just horrified by the way that the corporate media is covering this thing. This is a perfect example of Trump University scam style stuff. Trump campaigned on saying, Carrier, you take those jobs to Mexico, and if you want to ship those, those uh, heating and air conditioning units back to the United States, we're going to hit you with a 35% tariff. Well, Car Carrier is still shipping the air conditioning units to Mexico. He's not saving all these jobs. The heating units are going to continue to be manufactured in Indiana, but with huge subsidies, which have been as yet undisclosed from the state of Indiana and perhaps the federal government. So we have here, I mean, quite literally, what conservatives and libertarians decry as crony capitalism, capitalism that is being propped up by the government. Instead of a rational trade policy, which is what Donald Trump campaigned on. This is a stunt. This is reality television. This is what you can expect for the next four years. Form instead of sub, yeah, in form instead of style instead of substance. The appearance of form instead of substance. This is a lie. This is, this is what we, ha we all have to get used to now because we say, you know, those of you old enough to remember, this is exactly the kind of stuff that we saw during the eight years of Ronald Reagan. From his welfare queen to, I mean, he just went from thing to thing to thing where he would say, oh, here's a problem. Now we've solved this problem. It wasn't a problem to begin with. The solution was BS. The only time that the Reagan administration really did something worthwhile, frankly, was when they hired uh, uh, Mr. Seidman, I think his first name was John, to go in and, and nationalize the savings and loans. Because two years earlier, Reagan had deregulated them. And of course, when you deregulate banks, they go nuts trying to steal as much money as they can, which is what the SNLs did, including the one that was run by, Je by George Bush's brother, Neil. Silverado. And, you know, so these guys start robbing people blind and their banks go bankrupt. And at that point, what the Reagan administration did was actually pretty smart. They nationalized the banks. They screwed the stockholders. They said, okay, to stockholders, the stock you hold is worth nothing. We own these banks now, federally. 
and they protected the people who had, in, who had their money in the banks. And then over the period of the next 15, 20 years, they slowly, un this through the Re Resolution Trust uh, Association, the RTA, over the next 20 years or so, as, as Seidman, you can, uh, Bill Seidman is his name, you can find videos of him on YouTube explaining this whole thing. There's a five-part series from a lecture he gave at a university in Grand Rapids. This is brilliant. We've played it before on this program. It's a but you know, that was the one thing that they did well. But everything else was exactly what Trump is doing right now. Is basically saying, you know, I'm going to save jobs in America. You know, the reality is, you know, uh, Carrier received one five point one million dollars in Obama stimulus cash, and then decided to move to Mexico. This from. Breitbart, heat and air conditioning car company Carrier, received $5.1 million from the Obama administration. Now, this, of course, was back in February when they were attacking Obama for everything he did. Local media reported the Department of Energy awarded Carrier $5.1 million in clean energy tax credits in December of 2013 for its Indianapolis facility. They, demand, they plan to use the money to, quote, expand production at the Indianapolis facility to meet increasing demand for its eco-friendly condensing gas furnace pro pro product line. Despite the money the company announced last week, they decided to move 1,400 jobs to Mexico. This is from a Breitbart article in February. But basically, you know, Carrier's been running this scam for, for since 2013. Sure, we'll take federal money. We'll pretend to behave nice. We'll take that $5.1 million, and we'll tell everybody that we're going to expand our facilities here in Indiana. And then five months later, they announce that they're moving people to Mexico. Because there's no structural change here, there is no real, and, and frankly, there's no structural change in part because Donald Trump has, does not have the power to create structural change. Although the Republicans still control the House and Senate, they could do this today. They could pass legislation. They could pass the same legislation that Nancy Pelosi passed out of the House of Representatives with both Democratic and Republican votes, there were very few Republican votes, but there, there were some. Back in 2000, either 9 or 10, I'm pretty sure it was early 2009, that said, we are eliminating all tax benefits, all tax deductibility for companies like Carrier that want to ship their factories overseas. You want to ship your factory overseas? It costs a lot of money to ship a factory overseas. Right now, you can deduct all those costs from your taxes. And carriers owned by United Technologies, which makes billions of dollars in profit a year because they're, uh, they're you know, at least $6 billion of their money comes from the federal government as a defense contractor. They are a big-time defense contractor. So shipping a factory overseas, it's all tax deductible. Nancy Pelosi got legislation passed that ended that tax deductibility. And then, uh, and then associated with that legislation was another, you know, kind of a part two that said, by the way... If you're taking apart a factory in China and or in, in Mexico in this case and shipping it back to the United States, right now that's not tax deductible in the United States. That would be tax deductible against foreign revenue, but not against against American revenue. We're going to make it tax deductible here in the United States when you bring a factory back. So we're giving you both the carrot and the stick. It passed the House of Representatives. It got more than 50 votes in the Senate. It should have gone to President Obama for his signature, but it was filibustered by Republicans. It, it couldn't pass that 60-vote threshold. That exact same legislation, if the, if the Republicans, I mean, you know, if you want to do what Donald Trump campaigned on, pass that, pass that legislation. Pass legislation that puts a tariff on American-made, on, on foreign-made goods that are being brought into the United States particularly those goods manufactured by American-based companies that are benefiting from our, from our legal system, that are benef better benefiting from our governmental system, that are benefiting from our tax system, that are benefiting from our stable currency, that are benefiting from our court system, that are better benefiting from our educated, that are principally benefiting, benefiting from our consumers. But no, that's not what they're doing. This is all punch and judy. This is all show. This is the Tom Hartman Program. So all day long today, we are going to be treated to a, a, an advertisement for Donald Trump, basically, on our corporate media because they're not willing to call out what's really going on.